What's up everybody, I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on recreating the oil paint effect that comes with the new version of Photoshop, but you can use it in older versions. You can create an action and reuse it over and over and over, create your own, you know, various variation on it, um, you know, for whatever you want to do. But it basically smooths out the skin and kind of gives a real cool look to it. Um, just in case you don't know what it looks like, the oil paint effect, I'm going to duplicate this layer real fast, hitting Command J, go to Filter oil paint so this is basically uh, the uh, effect right here so you can adjust you know how clean the lines are uh, the scale of it uh, the angle that the light hits it the shine pretty cool effect but anyway it's not gonna be as detailed as that but it's gonna be kinda close so what you're gonna do first is duplicate your image twice I just grabbed one off of Google this is Brittany Murphy so duplicate your image twice so I already have it once, twice. Okay. So now we're going to go to filter. Make sure you're on your top little layer here. Filter, other, and high pass. And by default, it's set to 10, but we're going to bring it down to the radius to 3. So after you set it to 3, hit OK. Now you're going to change this blending mode right here to hard light. Alright, so basically that's without that on and with that on. See the details brought out a little bit more. And you're going to merge these two layers. That's why we made a duplicate. Alright, by hitting, I think it's Command E. There we go. I forget what it is on PC. But you're going to merge those two layers. Alright, so after you've done that, you're going to go to Filter, Stylize, and this uh, diffuse so that's filter stylized diffuse so the layer we just merged right and you're gonna set this to this anisotropic I probably slaughtered that but you get the idea this is one on the very bottom and hit OK so we're almost halfway there already so now it kinda that what that did basically it smoothed out uh, the skin and created like a soft look so you know, hiding that, you can see the very beginning stage and more detail, but a softer look. And you know, get a little waviness going on. You can kind of see it on the tongue and the hair. All right, so that's what that did. Um, now we're going to to kind of emphasize that more. We're going to rotate the image. So go to image, rotate. You can say counterclockwise. You could do it the other way too. Either way. And we're going to reapply that filter. So you can go to filter, other, um, I'm sorry, uh, filter styles and diffuse, you know, same setting, or you can just um, press the little thing at the top. It's the, the last used effect. It's just going to reapply it. So that's done now. So I'm just going to. All right, um, so now we're going to rotate the image back now. So what that did, basically it applies a filter at a little interesting looking angle and you'd rotate it to apply it again to give it a unique look. So now we're gonna rotate the image back. So go back to image, rotate, and clockwise. Or if you had it the opposite way, you know, you're just uh, making the image straight again. Um, so now that that's done, um, we're going to run smart sharpen so go or filter sorry sharpen and smart sharpen so once again the layer that we rotated and applied this stuff that layer filter sharpen smart sharpen all right and basically you're going to leave the um the amount at a hundred and uh, radius, we're going to move it up to 1.5. And um, make sure this is uh, set to guess and blur. If it isn't, usually this is like the default setting. But All right, And hit OK. All right. So now, almost done. Uh, we're going to use the uh, curves tool to kind of bring out some contrast. So you can do this to taste. You know, how extreme you want to get with it. Um, I usually add a point. Um, you can see there's uh, three little lines here. Little one, two, three. 
I usually add one like right about here, you know, and one at the uh, second to the last line there before it gets to the very end. And we're just gonna pull this down a little bit, you know, play around with it, see. Oh, I'll move this out the way a little bit so you can see the contrast. That's pulling up some of the whites there. I don't want that. Pull it down. Okay, maybe boost this up a little bit. Eh, I like it a little darker. So I'm taking the preview off so I can see the original. Okay, you hit OK. So you can play around right with that for a second. Make sure you get it how you like it. And once that's finished, you go to, um, I'm gonna go back to filter, blur, and um, let's see what we're gonna do here. I have to look at my little notes. <laughs> Surface blur, sorry about that. All right, so with this, we're gonna have the settings, leave it how the default settings. If you don't have it, it's gonna be five for the radius and 15 for the level. All right, and once you have that all set, you hit OK. So what that did was basically it um, softened the lines that might have been created when we did the Smart Sharpen or when we use the Smart Sharpen tool. Um, and if there are any other artifacts left over, well, this is kind of a low res image, but if there were like little obvious artifacts, you can use this. Uh, little blur tool or smudge what's it called the uh, yeah the smudge tool little finger looking thing and uh, the strength you're gonna have it from like 15 to 50 percent is probably as much as you want to go with that and if we had like a real hard line we just kind of go over it very slightly uh, let's just pretend this hair was a little messed up we just go over it see how it blurred it out a little bit made a little uh, smoother looking all right so that's basically it um, you know clean up whatever little artifacts you have and you're pretty much done so we can compare the original with uh, our little cleaned up version so it kind of looks comic booky kind of but it just creates this real nice soft uh, texture to you know skin and the hair once again it's not quite the same as the oil paint effect because you don't have as much control of direction and whatnot. Um, but it's pretty damn close for, you know, if you didn't have the new version of Photoshop. Hopefully that helped you guys. Um, and if you wanted, oh, if you were curious on how to make this into an action, you know, you'd uh, set up by hitting this uh, little button here, create new action, title it, whatever you want, and it would start recording and you'd follow all these steps and once you're finished you'd hit the little stop button and that creates the action of all those steps so you wouldn't have to redo them again you can just pick a photo hit play or run or whatever and it would uh, apply all those steps except for the uh, you know the levels with the curves tool um, you probably want to do that manually so I don't know if I would use an action per se with this but you know if you don't really care about the curves tool you want to do that afterwards you can but just another way to create an action using this but that's how uh, you make an oil paint effect using any older version of photoshop well not any but older versions of photoshop if you don't have cs6 so, uh, subscribe like comment and i'll talk to you people later